What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about the Canik TP9 SFX. This is their competition ready, budget minded, 9mm handgun. And if you don't know Canik, they're out of Turkey and they're imported by Century Arms. And uh, you may remember seeing uh, these videos all over YouTube a few years back when they came out with the first series of Canics. They were uh, not this kind of gun here. This is a competition gun. It's all pimped out. But the original Canics, they were you know, smaller and real plain Jane. And the biggest selling point was that it was a striker fired polymer gun out of Turkey for, I think it was like $2.99. So it was crazy, crazy cheap. So a lot of people were raving over how good of a gun it was for such a low price. You know, uh, instead of buying a high point, um, you could buy a Canik um, handgun and, and have a way better gun. And at the time, I didn't think anything of it. I was like, yeah, whatever. It's just another gun uh, in a sea of a million guns out there. Whatever. And I just ignored it. I didn't think anything of it. It didn't knock my socks off. And I think the original one even had a weird decocker on the top with the press down thing, if I remember right. And I didn't like that. And I was like, that's just stupid weird. And then uh, they progressed. A couple years went by and they came out with different models. A lot of reviews came out and they were saying, yeah, this gun's really nice. It's accurate. The trigger's actually really good for a budget gun. And then this one is the TP9 SFX. So this is, at the time, the most um, feature-packed Canik that you can buy. And uh, the reasons why I chose this gun is because this right here. This is really the deal breaker that made me go, okay, I need to check out this gun. Um, I went to the local gun store here in Las Vegas that I live by. I saw this in the cabinet and I was like, hey, that's that TP9 SFX I've been hearing about. And um, the fact that you, know, you can mount a red dot optic on here from the factory, it's pre-cut. I was like, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and drop $5.99 on this thing. So I went ahead and bought this for $5.99. And that's not a lot of money, guys. In the grand scheme of um, competition, uh, quality, accurate, reliable handguns, that's like just your run-of-the-mill Glock or M&P at $5.99. And those don't have half the features this thing has. So I bought it. And uh, shout out to uh, Northwest Arms, by the way, here in Las Vegas. Go there and check them out. Tell them Mick Slip said hi. But uh, I bought this gun, and uh, yeah, I, guys, I am absolutely happy with my purchase with this gun because um, I've already tested it, taken it out to the range, and did a lot of shooting with it, and I love it. Uh, but let's go ahead and go over the features front to back for the guys who are not familiar with the SFX. So right off the bat, let me go ahead and uh, empty out that magazine first. Let me make sure this is clear. So, you get the long slide versus the, the shorter slides that it comes with normally. Um, and that's going to give you a longer sight radius. It's going to be um, a little bit more accurate, a lot of people believe, because your sight radius is longer. It comes with a fiber optic insert here in the front. This is a steel uh, dovetailed fiber optic front sight. And it also ships with multiple fiber optic inserts that you can swap out. So if you want to go with green, you can put that in there as well. So that's nice. The slide itself is a beautiful, like a gray colored Cerakote that's held up pretty good um, over the testing that I've shot this thing. And uh, it looks nice. I love that two-tone kind of look. It looks really good. I like that. And then uh, you have these lightning cuts into the slide. These are not ports for gases. These are actually to lighten up the slide because it's a, a big hunk of metal up here and it's long. And the spring is actually tuned for having optics mounted to this so it cycles properly as well. It's got a humongous extractor right here. This one is chambered in uh, 9x19. Um, I'm sure they'll come out with other um, calibers in the future, but um, I don't know anything about that. But uh, uh, this one is in 9. You got slide serrations in the front. So you can rack the slide, especially if there's an optic back here and you don't want to touch this. You can grab it in the front. That's nice. And then you have slide serrations in the back and the slide serrations actually carry over to the mounting plate. So you have actually a, quite a big amount of surface for racking that slide. That's nice. So push-pull method, no problem. They also have a feature in the mounting plate here to mount a caulking handle. So you can actually screw in a caulking handle so you can uh, rack the slide easy as well. But um, my field testing has shown that I don't like that caulking handle personally. It's just big and gets in the way. I don't need it. I don't have a problem at all caulking this thing just by grabbing right on, right on the, the back here. So it doesn't bother me one bit. 
Alright, so here's the inside of the case that the Canon comes in, and as you can see, it comes with a lot of stuff. I mean, uh, it's jam-packed full of stuff for $5.99. You get this craptastic holster, which um, I don't think anybody likes. It's kind of weird. I don't know why they even designed this thing this way. It has these weird snaps. Don't like it. Don't use it. Um, I'm just going to get a Kydex holster made for this. Uh, it also comes with a mag loader for people with weak thumbs if you can't load your magazines. And here is the original rear sight plate with your Warren tactical sights in the back. They're unmarked, they're just uh, blacked out. And then you, obviously it goes well with the fiber optics, so there should be nice contrast. And it's dovetailed as well, all metal. And then here's the four plates it comes with. These four plates allow you to mount all the popular red dots that are out there. All right, so let's just go down the list. Plate number one, you can mount the Dr. Miopta Insight and Vortex. And that's what I'm using, plate number one, because the uh, sight mark that I have here, this is a $99 budget sight mark. And uh, this mimics the Vortex um, mounting plates. Then number two uses a Trigicon RMR. Number three uses the Seymour. And number four uses the Loophole, Shield, and J-Point. Now keep in mind, that's nine different optics, so that's a, a huge value right there, right? But... There's a lot of aftermarket um, red dot sights like Sightmark here that mimic a lot of the popular ones. So it's not just nine red dots that you can mount on this thing. It's actually probably more like 15 to 20 or more. So very, very cool option. And then there's also this little tiny box that has all kinds of little gadgets in here. And if you look closely there, you can see the uh, magazine releases. You have three different options. You have small, medium, large, and they're engraved S, M, and L. And they even have the, the mounting screws for that. Has a little Allen wrench. And then here's that little caulking handle that you can mount on the side of the gun if you need it. And then here's the extra fiber optic sights. And then it comes with two different back straps. As you can see, it comes with a medium and a large. So it doesn't end there in the value. You get all this stuff, but you also get three magazines. Guys, that's awesome, right? I've bought guns that only give you one magazine and then they say, screw you, if you want more, you gotta buy more. These guys offer three magazines. So one standard capacity 18 round magazine, and then get this, two 20 round magazines. They're basically the 18 round magazines with two plus extensions. And these are made by Metgar, guys. So this is a reputable company. They make really good stuff. It's not some uh, cheap fly-by-night company. And here's one more cool factor about the Canik TP9 that you may not know about. These magazines by Metgar, they are almost identical to Beretta 92 magazines or Beretta M9s. Look at that. The followers are the same. The bends right here are the same. This one here, the Beretta magazine is only a 15 round capacity while the Canik is 18. But other than that, the profiles are exactly the same. So all you got to do to get the Beretta magazine to work in the Canik is take a Dremel and mimic the hole that the magazine catch locks into. So that's not that difficult. You just have to measure it. And I just happen to have five <laughs> extra Beretta 92 magazines laying around. So that right there is freaking cool. <laughs> so I bought this gun as a home defense gun for my wife when I'm not here. You know, high capacity, a lot of rounds, don't need to reload for the most part. You got 20 rounds plus one in the chamber, and it's accurate and reliable. And you got to have a light on there so you can identify your target before you shoot it. And uh, this is an Olight PL2 LS Valkyrie. It pumps out 1,200 lumens, so tons of light to blind the bad guy and identify the target. This is the cool one, though, that has the red laser on it. And then the optic I chose to run on here, I wanted to go with a budget theme since this is a budget gun. I found this Sightmark Mini Dot and uh, this thing is only $99 or at least it was $99 at my local gun shop and uh, it uses the same pattern as the Vortex and uh, so far my testing is pretty good with this thing. Um, I'm, I don't have a lot of experience shooting with a red dot so there is a learning curve for sure. All right, so let me show you some footage I took at the range when I first took this thing out to test just the iron sights without the red dot. I'm about 40, I think about 45 yards maybe, closer to 50.
Yeah, that's nice, man. The longer slide and the fiber optic front sight really makes it easy to make a 45, 50 yard shot with this thing. That's pretty good. Not bad for 50 yards. So as you can see, this thing shot really accurate with just the fiber optic front sight. Really impressed with the accuracy on this thing. Again, I was at 50 yards, iron sights, hitting that steel target over and over and over and over again, which is pretty impressive for a guy like me because I am not the best shot in the world, yet this gun was allowing me to do accurate hits on an 18-inch target at 50 yards. Making 50 yard hits with a handgun is not normal. Almost no handgun out there is really designed for that kind of distance. But this gun actually allowed me to do that with, with relative ease. And I'm very, very, very impressed with this as far as accuracy goes. And it also had no uh, malfunctions either. All the magazines work just fine. All right, so let's uh, test out the red dot. I'm going to show you some footage of me shooting the red dot for the very first time and testing the magazine reliability as well. I've heard people complain of their 20 round magazines not locking back on the last shot. So let's go ahead and uh, show you some footage of that. I wanna make sure this thing really does work. There we go. Look at that, lock back on the last shot. I am very happy. Bump it up to three rounds. This trigger is really nice, by the way. And I rushed it on that last one. But yeah, that trigger is pretty nice. so far. I'm liking the red dot too. If I can just uh, focus on that dot, they sit really high above uh, the bore of the uh, handgun. Now I've got 20 years of looking at my front sight and lining it up with the rear sight, so going with a micro dot is definitely uh, different and uh, takes some getting used to for sure. But it is quick. You can shoot both eyes open. They're all locking back though, that's good. Three mags and they all lock back on the last shot. As you can see, uh, I missed a lot of shots because this is my first time shooting with a uh, micro red dot on my pistol. And if you don't know, when you look down, when you look down the sights on a pistol with a red dot on it, that dot is just moving all over the place. I mean, every little micro movement with your hand, that dot is just, jiggling around all over the place. You know, that three MOA dot, that thing is big and it even gets bigger as you go out to longer distances. So this is designed for close range shooting quickly with both eyes open. So bang, 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 at 15, 20 feet is where this thing probably shines. You know, trying to make an accurate shot out to 50 yards with this three MOA dot, it's gonna be very difficult if not impossible because that three MOA dot just gets bigger and bigger and covers up the entire target uh, once you get out to 40, 50 yards. So of course you can make the dot smaller, but again, I don't think that's what this is designed for. If you want an uh, accurate longer shooting gun, take the red dot off and just go with the fiber optics. And like you saw in my video, 
you can make 50 yard shots very easily with this gun. If you want to do close range fast shooting, um, put the red dot on and use that. All right guys, so that's my uh, initial first impressions of the Canik TP9 SFX. Again, I think this is a fantastic budget gun at $599. You get a lot of features and really good trigger. I think it's like a four pound trigger. Breaks clean and resets short. I mean, this thing is just phenomenal for $599. And then you add in um, this $99 sight mark and um, it just makes it that much cooler. <laughs> that's definitely a cool factor for sure. And then this Olight uh, PL2 LS Valkyrie 1200 lumens. I think this is a fantastic package for home defense. 20 rounds plus one in the chamber is definitely a force to be reckoned with. Um, I don't feel undergunned at all with this, this uh, gun in my hand for sure. So I gotta definitely test this thing out though and um, run a lot more rounds to it just to see if this thing really is as accurate as I think it is. But so far, so good. All right, guys. So thanks a lot for watching. Please hit that like button to support my channel. I really appreciate it. Helps me out a lot. And leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about the Canik TP9 SFX budget competition gun.